Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Bonsoir. Est-ce que vous m'entendez Oui Très bien. Je suis, euh, je suis ravie euh, de euh, présenter aujourd'hui cette troisième masterclass euh, que nous avons euh, organisée dans le cadre du cycle de conférence L'œil des artistes. Je vais bientôt euh, euh, switcher to English, because it's going to be in English, mais je voulais quand même dire euh, un mot de bienvenue déjà aux invités de la Fondation Jean-François et Marie-Laure de Clermont-Tonnerre qui nous soutiennent euh, aujourd'hui. Merci Marie-Laure de ta présence euh, aujourd'hui et, et du soutien euh, à ce cycle. Euh, et puis également adresser un mot de bienvenue tout particulier aux lycéens qui nous ont rejoints aujourd'hui, et notamment les lycéens du lycée Newton et ceux du lycée Mozart. Bienvenue à Sciences Po, on est ravis de, de vous avoir ici aujourd'hui. And I'm going to switch to English to thank Jean de Loisy again for the moderation of uh, the debates and the preparation, as well as for the invitation of Thomas Saraceno. Thank you, Jean de Loisy, for organizing uh, this uh, invitation and a fabulous exchange that we're going to have in a few minutes. Also to thank Frédéric Gros, professor of philosophy in uh, Sciences Po, who's now uh, one Qui of our... Pas anglais. No. <laughs> 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 Pero habla español. Sí. Uh, and, uh, Castellano, sí. Merci, Frédéric, uh, de ta sí. présence également. Y también una palabra de bienvenida, Tomás. Y es un placer acogerte acá en Sciences Po. Así que bienvenido y estarás bienvenido. Las puertas están abiertas. Merci a tous y bon échange. Bonne soirée. Merci mille fois Delphine d'avoir introduit euh, cette euh, conversation de, qui fait partie du cycle de conférences dans l'œil des artistes auxquels euh, nous avons, Frédéric Gros et moi-même, euh, dédié le thème de la crise de la relation. Alors euh, la crise de la relation, ça évoque euh, l'irascible euh, mise en cause au fond des relations que nous avons avec, euh, avec toutes sortes d'altérités aussi bien des altérités géographiques, religieuses, de genre, des altérités également euh, biologiques, des différences entre, euh, avec euh, d'autres mondes, la biodiversité en particulier. Et cette crise de la relation, elle, a, euh, elle est en spectacle en ce moment dans le monde. Vous pouvez la voir dans les rues, dans les, dans les, euh, euh, au Parlement, vous pouvez la voir euh, dans la géopolitique d'aujourd'hui. C'est quelque chose qui, malheureusement, marque fortement... Euh, la difficulté que nous avons à mettre le monde en commun. C'est à peu près ça, non, la crise de la relation, Frédéric Oui, oui, merci de, merci de me laisser la parole. Si, je, je vais parler en français, excusez-moi. Vous savez que j'ai parlé français, là. Si, ah, si, si c'est vrai. <rire> c'est vrai, euh, crise de la relation et du, euh, et, et du commun, euh, c'est donc notre troisième, euh, notre troisième rencontre. C'est vrai qu'on avait commencé avec euh, Tino Segal où on a interrogé finalement la possibilité d'un art qui se passerait d'objets, qui se passerait d'œuvres d'art et qui au fond nous fait sortir du fétichisme de l'œuvre d'art, c'est-à-dire comment rester, comment construire une expérience esthétique euh, qui se passe du fétichisme de l'œuvre d'art et qui se construirait comme, une, comme un dispositif de rencontre. Ça, c'était avec Tino Segal et avec Edith Dekint qui, avec ses vitrines, offrait, je crois, enfin, c'est ce qu'on avait proposé avec Jean, d'installer une, une critique, une certaine critique de la, de la marchandisation du monde et dévoilait un peu les, les vérités maudites de la propriété. Voilà. Vérité maudite de la propriété comme rapacité, exclusivité, etc. Thomas Saraceno, le commun et la relation. Je crois que si, si on a pu parler des vérités maudites de la propriété autrefois, aujourd'hui, avec l'art que nous propose Thomas Saraceno, ce qu'il dévoile, c'est le trésor perdu le trésor perdu de l'appropriation. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, dès qu'on parle d'appropriation, on parle de prise, on parle effectivement de, de rapacité, d'exclusivité, etc. Et c'est oublié quand même, et c'est quelque chose qui est resté dans les langues, dans les langues latines, en espagnol, comme en, comme en français, que quand on parle des propriétés d'un triangle, que quand on parle de gestes 
approprié ou non, ou quand on parle, quand on parle du corps propre, par exemple, en, en philosophie avec Merleau-Ponty ou, ou d'espace propre. Alors je pense à Merleau-Ponty parce qu'effectivement, il s'agissait, on est déjà dans le thème de la vibration avec, euh, avec Merleau-Ponty, puisqu'il s'agissait de dire que le corps, le corps propre, c'est celui qui peut résonner avec le paysage. Et au fond, la peinture, c'est voilà, un peu l'écho de cette résonance. Et je crois que les installations... Si, si je suis trop long, tu me le dis. Non, hein. non ça va. Tu n'avais pas prévu que, ouais, que je prenne la parole un peu longtemps. Non, mais ce qui m'intéresse dans l'art de Thomas Araceno, c'est que précisément, il nous, il nous propose des, des expériences de co-appropriation de l'espace, de coappropriation du monde. Et cette coappropriation, c'est elle qui définit ce qu'on appelle un commun. C'est-à-dire cette coappropriation, elle est du côté du partage, elle est du côté... Elle, elle, quand je dis que ça rejoint le trésor perdu, c'est que, je ne sais pas, dans le, on apprend en philosophie que dans le stoïcisme, une notion existait qu'on appelait l'oikéiosis, qu'on a traduit par appropriation et qui signifie que tout vivant doit s'approprier, doit s'approprier un monde, mais pas au sens de la prédation, au sens d'habiter le monde, au sens d'habiter le monde, de tisser des liens avec lui, et ce n'est pas, pas, pas de la réduction, c'est pas de la réduction euh, au monde, voilà. Et ce que je voulais dire simplement, si tu me... J'ai juste trois secondes, c'est que Thomas Araceno, qui peut apparaître comme le... Le poète, l'artiste du lien par excellence, il ne l'entend pas au sens faible, parfaitement hypocrite de la communication, de la sociabilité. Ça prend une dimension cosmologique, c'est-à-dire que l'installation devient avec lui un dispositif de résonance. Voilà. Qu'est-ce que c'est que la résonance Qu'est-ce que c'est que la résonance et, et je crois que ça nous, ça nous transporte vers l'idée que que l'art est un intensificateur de sensibilité. Alors, je vais rebondir là-dessus, voilà. oui. Frédéric. L'art comme oui, intensificateur raison. de sensibilité, lorsque vous avez vu quelques-uns d'entre vous des expositions de Thomas Saraceno, qui est près de moi, qui est cet artiste qui vit à Berlin, qui est né dans les années 70, vous avez vu à chaque fois que Thomas Saraceno travaillait en collaboration et qu'il apprenait de ses collaborations un certain nombre de choses. Vous avez vu parfois des grandes, euh, des grandes toiles d'araignées qui devenaient des sculptures. Vous avez vu des films faits sur le cosmos. Et vous êtes rendu compte peut-être qu'une grande partie de l'activité de Thomas Saraceno, qui a commencé et qui a parmi ses collaborations les araignées, mais pas seulement, c'est une façon d'apprendre à faire usage du monde. Faire usage du monde pour se déplacer, pour euh, ressentir... Euh, les, 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 les chocs photoniques ou les chocs euh, cosmiques pour essayer de trouver une autre façon d'être euh, en situation avec la nature, pour essayer de se libérer des frontières, de se libérer de, 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 au fond de cette sorte d'insistance sur l'extraction coloniale que l'on a avec... Euh, avec le, les richesses, c'est se libérer aussi des énergies fossiles. Et pour tout cela, il propose un certain nombre d'expériences. Ces expériences, il les a appris parfois avec les araignées, parfois avec d'autres types d'animaux, parfois avec des communautés indigènes de telle ou telle région. Et en fait, l'ensemble de son travail, et c'est là que va être le sujet, si vous voulez, de notre conversation, c'est le rôle de l'artiste, à un moment donné, s'élargit du monde des formes et devient beaucoup plus que de créer quelques formes et du sens pour ces formes. Ça devient aussi parfois essayer de trouver une nouvelle façon de se servir du monde. Et dans ce, 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 cette action-là, qui est mi-poétique, mi-philosophique, mi-plastique, où est le rôle de l'artiste Est-ce qu'on en est encore là Et est-ce que l'artiste que l'on imagine parfois seul dans son atelier en train de penser poétiquement les choses, est-ce que l'artiste qui, lui, au contraire, comme Thomas, travaille toujours en collaboration avec toutes sortes de communautés, est-ce qu'il correspond bien au modèle que l'on a de ce qu'est un artiste qui est dans cette sorte d'involution, dans cette pénétration à l'intérieur de lui-même pour formuler quelque chose Donc, 
The first question, my dear Thomas, first, I am so pleased to have you here. It's a joy, you are the one of the most joyful artists I know, uh, creative in permanence, but I have seen the last exhibition you did in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the Serpentine Gallery in London, and it was called In Collaboration, and you were e effectively demonstrating that you work always in collaboration. What does it mean for you? Can you develop a bit this idea of being in collaboration? Hello, and thank you for coming. I'm so happy to say. Thomas? Yeah. One second. Ah, or, or maybe I get it out as well. Hello, yes. Yeah. So happy, and thank you uh, to see so many people uh, today. and. Uh, um, yeah, meet again old and hopefully new friends. And um, yeah, I'm very, very happy uh, to be here with all of you in these difficult moments, I will say. Uh, very difficult moments. And, and just only coming through Science Po, I, I was trying to collect many images, I think so, are over four or five hundred. This means, <laughs> let's not hope we will see them all, but, um, uh, Right there, 119 is with Bruno Latour. And when I came to the corridors, I remember twice we met in his office um, in the building and having wonderful conversation. This mean is something which, and I think so then later with um, um, Jean de Loisy in the exposition of the Louvre also, he co-organized a, a conversation that we have at that time. This mean bring me these uh, memories. Um, then I will start with the more difficult, which I really don't know an answer, which is, I think, should deserve. And don't ask me too much because I don't know it. But, um, but it's the more complicated one. I can only tell you when, when we did this work, which also was at the Palais de Tokyo at the time, uh, one shortly post I did recently in social media uh, and tried to answer um, Jean's questions about collaboration, it just came up when we were in, um, in Hood, in Palestine, uh, together with this museum, Aerosolar, it's a collective project where many people donate plastic bags and then a lot of messages are written and then together they form this huge canvas and envelope and then it raises up into the air. Um, the, the musician that we wanted to invite was Daniel Barenboom and the academy with Said to play inside the museum. Uh, I just post that and I, it's all my respect and reverence and, and grief on this very difficult moment. But uh, for me it was quite of an inspiration. Uh, what, uh, and, and who knows more about the project, you know what I'm talking, no? Dalen Barenbol, the great composer, musician, that he formed this fantastic um, 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 orchestra, no, between Israel and Palestine and have been there for many, many years. And, um, and then it came back, uh, yeah, that project and that possibility of working together and that was um, still my inspiration, my hope, and, uh, and I hope so that art could, could keep inspiring us. They have done it uh, for many years and I hope so that this it could keep resonated. Um, I don't know if, if it's an answer to the situation, but I hope so, that, uh, that art could serve also in that way. Just uh, tell us a word about this project. Uh, but, but before, est-ce que vous entendez bien quand Thomas parle? Oui. Ça va? Oui. Pas terrible? OK. Well, Peut-être on va essayer. We try again with this one. Ah. Non, ça va? Uh, May just some words, uh, I would like some words more to explain the project because it was a, I know where it was, but you often describe this like a, a living museum, this project. So what, were, what was the goal? What was the idea behind it? And why do you say it's, uh, and what does it to do with your, the work you were doing before, after, or beside with, uh, I don't know, spiders, for instance? Um. No, what I like about th this particular project, first it's called Museo Solar, then it kind of uh, it, it evolved in a, 
it was always kind of a community, right? He started in, I think it's 2004, uh, and it keep, keep going. Uh, I think so now with um, some friends will be at the uh, Thailand Biennale, invited by Rikri Tiravanesia, uh, a friend, and uh, they're collecting again more plastic bags there. And, um, and it's something kind of started like this, instead of do it yourself, we call it always do it together. Uh, as a different of DIY, um, and and there was this idea of of not really knowing, basically start with kind of a couple of instructions of of trying to think um, yeah what plastic bags are doing today to the planet and to many lives, um, and to float in the bottom of ocean of air in a different way as Torricelli might have thought in some moment, but. But what it strikes me that is the project is still alive and, and, and pretty much alive. Uh, um, and I think so was the last one, kind of a little bit public presentation, was the architectural Venice Biennale. Uh, again, uh, and was a, you have to think that this is one version, there are I think so six or seven around the world. Uh, people come together uh, at the Palais de Tokyo also, uh, was present that. And the nice thing at the Palais de Tokyo also what we argue and what we organize together, and I want to mention also Rebecca Lamarcher, uh, who was together with Jean uh, curating this, for me, very important <laughs> memorial exhibition. Had the part of every scene you could enter for free. This means the Palais Tokyo, you could pay the ticket, but or the part of the every scene was for free and was quite of important also to have that uh, also um, free entrance where many workshops and things were happening, but people could bring their own plastic bags, this is what you can see here. And m most of the time what happened that people write messages, beautiful messages and very touchy uh, messages. Um, as a community, it, this project then it's, it's seen by, you know, um, by, by people and then in Argentina they, there was a person who wanted to replicate it and, and brought it to a community of, um, it was a beautiful, Beja Flor is a community of uh, people in Buenos Aires who uh, um, separate trash, different type of trash. In Germany, you know, there is a kind of a much more discipline, it, uh, the, the plastic, the paper, and the bottles. But in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, you put all together. And this, I mean, this community, what it does is separate. Now, when they saw this project, uh, they were amazed. And they said, oh, okay, finally, all the plastic bed that we kind of separate, we will give it another meaning. And this means they, they collected all the plastic bags. Uh, and then um, this person who organized um, then brought it to people who are in prison, uh, in a jail, in a car carcerate state, deprived from a certain type of freedom. And he was very particularly talking, it's not freedom of mobility, but not a freedom in their mind. And he very criticized the term also jail. Uh, this means also I, I, I want to ask you some uh, questions about this idea because you often speak of the ocean of air. Yeah. And it's very important because uh, you have been taught about the ocean of air by the way that uh, some uh, spiders are moving into space. Yeah. And uh, since that, it has created in your work a lot of diverse uh, way of uh, copying in a way or uh, uh, moving into space, uh, whether for... Uh, uh, carrying uh, objects, whether for carrying people, whether for uh, so what are what? How did you consider the the way of moving of those spiders, and how it brought you to somewhere else? And in fact, those spiders you were considering, I must tell you uh, all all of you, is that when you are in your studio with the twenty seven. Uh, uh, artists or collaborators you have there. Uh, you have also something like 300 spiders that work with you and for you there. And, uh, and you observe them and there is this way of moving in the space that you have been very interested in. Maybe we can start from there because in, from this you you create a lot of association that are ar arachnophilia on air, aerosen, and maybe you could explain this way you thought in looking at something and some friends that are spiders. Yeah, I'm trying to read something about different mobilities, migration, and ability to displace within, within the air. Um, I'll thought. Let me see, I thought uh, uh, avoiding air travel is crucial. What is more important that to realize that 80% of the people in the world have never traveled by aeroplane. 80% of the old population of the world 
I've never tried it by airplane. 50% of aviation emissions are caused by 1% of the world's population. Therefore, are one, there, there are 1.3 million people in the air at any given time, releasing over 1 billion of CO2 annually. Annually, in addition to technology just, change, just this now, now there is one million, one point three in million the sky now okay. in planes. Yeah, which basically is, a, but it's only a fraction of the population of the world. Um, well, now what then? What we did, and and, and yes, it's true. Uh, you know, there are um, the possibility of, of many seeds, spores, birds, whales. Um, that they drift and they have something very beautiful. Just a little bit to give another dimension is something which is called stillness in motion. Um, um, Santos Dumont, uh, a Brazilian, but also has a relation with France, he have coined that term that I think so is very beautiful, is, is the ability to enter somehow when we talk about the atmosphere in a thermodynamic equilibrium. has been just to make it very simple. Um, you are able to move, but you don't notice that you are moving because you are drifting with the medium to surround you. I mean, this happened only when you, um, in a sailboat, you will be moving with the wind, but you always have to drag or, or the resistance of the water. When you are in a hotter balloon, usually that burn fossil fuel, is very, is that there's only some moment that you enter that you don't go up and you don't go down. This means the sun, it keep you in a state of floatability, which is neutral. You could argue this, that it could happen when you dive uh, and then you don't go down, you have the, 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 the level of weight that you kind of, um, and then you will be moving with the current. This means, um, to give you this idea of uh, stillness in motion, you could be talking with Jean de Loisy and Frederic on, on a gondola, which is open, um, maybe five, meter, me five meters above the ground, you will see the tree is shaking, but his hair will not move one millimeter. I can put this piece of paper on the edge, it will not fall. And your brain is very hard to reconcile because you think, how could be? I never experienced an, a, a movement without the ability to feel. Does it mean it, it, it plays your brain kind of in a very strange situation? Now, together with, well, you know, we develop together with Aerosin, you know, we. In, in the country of uh, the brother Mongolfier, and uh, we, but they always use fire, right? Even incidentally, the balloon at, at, at the court of the, um, it, it took off um, um, without wanting. The, the, the principle of flying was always is, is, is burning something or having a gas lighter than air, helium, hydrogen, or fire. In the case, what we are doing is always, as you said, with the balloon is without. Fire. This means we speculate a lot about how the, this ability of drifting, and then we develop together with MIT also a small um, have float predictor. Let me see, virtual. If we are now, if let's say if I have to go back to um, Berlin, now we are in Paris, and then we get an idea of how uh, only with the window we'll be able to go back. And, and let's see which is the the best day, then we launch it. Well, there are different colors, altitude, I mean, there we are. Red is today, if I take off today, this is the wind direction, yellow is tomorrow, green, day after tomorrow, okay, in four days, orange, better. Okay, violet, you see, that's very good. This means in one, two, three, four, in, the, in five days from today, there might be a wind current who take me back to Berlin without burning any fossil fuel. This compute 700 weather stations around the world and, and, and predict that was done basically, um, I think so, uh, yeah, together with MIT and, and many others. And now it, it will tell us a little bit the result. Give me one minute. The aerosol sculpture left from Paris on March 26. This is today's 17, in a couple of days. Well, the year is wrong, it's 2023. Arrived within 50.26 kilometers from Berlin. And um, well, it tells you how many liters of kerosene you might have saved. And, uh, and the amount of ton of CO2 you will save, you will move only with the, with the wind. Um, well, it's quite sophisticated, the, the, the project and, and the Is program. it true that it started by uh, observing, uh, uh, observing spider webs and the way some spiders are yeah. traveling uh, yeah. 70 kilometers yeah. a day? Yeah. Could you explain that? Yeah, well, some, it's called balloons, but they even have nothing to do with balloon. Nevertheless, it's a kind of a drag line they release on the air and then 
uh, they are cross they are able to cross all the Mediterranean from Europe to here. Um, and that was always Dar Darwin was always bustling because he could not understand how spider would arrive to certain island very distant. And it's mean there is this ability of um, not having maybe morphological developed with the ability of flying, but still they could do. But um, yeah. <laughs> if you hold the Museo Solar, this balloon with the many plastic bags, there is one very nice idea of um, how you could do a social balloon in flight. It's getting a bit too complicated, but usually spiderlings, they use these, and now look at a um, colonial terminology that we inherit still from science. Uh, we say it to colonize new places in, in science world. I would be a decolonized flight for spider when they're a baby in the animal kingdom. Look at this, animal kingdom, still when I read the king. It's been, it is <laughs> a long way to coming me from the science family to reframe some of the languages that are used and, and me working so close also with uh, biology of spider working with me. Now, they, they, they go up because there was a case that a very mature big spider weighing few grams, uh, they found out that in Namibia, it was able to travel 100 kilometers. And they made a calculation and said, okay, if this spider will do a method of ballooning, releasing a threat and flying, um, uh, the, the threat, in its, you know, like a kite surf, you know, like, it needs to be hundreds of kilometers. It means it's impossible. And then they could not find out how this spider was able to fly. Now, what they realize is that what they do is something, uh, they. Hey, um, they do it together. This mean they go up to a tree, one here, one here, one here, one here, many, and they release a, a, a line, which is normal silk with a bit of glue, normal silk with the glue. Now the wind is the weaver, and what it does, the, all these threads, which are hundreds, and they start to be weaved by the wind, and you have to think that spiders are mostly blind, and the silk is is released from the spinneret in the back. This mean they're not really maybe conscious, <laughs> I understand it. Now, this, when the, the sail is formed and there's enough drag, they all release their legs and they are able to fly all together. I mean, one plastic bag alone will not make it, but if you stitch it together, together with others, you might be able to do something different. Isn't there is a parallel. I don't know, it's too complicated. No, we, we got it there, I know. Vous avez, vous avez, vous avez pigé? L'affaire de la Sorry. circulation <laughs> en tapis volant uh, fait par des araignées. Et, uh, en fait, something that I love is that uh, looking at those uh, spiders, you imagine a way of flying and you create the balloon, a way of flying without any uh, fossil energy, of course. And, uh, and you think, it seems that uh, you think that we can live in the world totally differently on many manners. So, is it the uh, role of an artist to do that? <laughs> Uh, hey, answer me. Is it the role <laughs> of an artist to do that? It's a difficult what, question. Uh, huh? No, what, 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 you know, what I came to realize is again, you know, is, is um, um, I, I wish I could live as other people live. And what I'm really coming to uh, my great admiration is a couple of communities which I have been working. This means you can very briefly terms at the beginning I was very obsessed with uh, and maybe um, um, being able to to talk certain languages which yes as you, was maybe science and then when we finally publish in Nature magazine and plus maybe I give up a little bit that trend and then I start to move uh, maybe to to others um, community which kind of interests me more and more has been one of the latest iterations, and you know that I love spiders, was a little bit to look again about communities, other cultures who love spiders. In this case was a Pierre Bolo, a spider diviner in Cameroon. However, to give you the context, 5% of the population of the world are still considered today indigenous or First Nation people, 5%. Now it's well known that these populations around the world are able to maintain and preserve 80% of the biodiversity on the planet Earth. Vous avez entendu les chiffres 5% des de la population mondiale qui sont des indigènes arrive à préserver 80% de la biodiversité. 
And this means when we think about sustainability, where the world that I can imagine to live, I start to be more embedded on the thinking, well, there are people who live very sustainable. And they have lived for a very long time with a political system that Western or some part of the population are trying to corrupt and disrupt. Now, without being so romantic, of course, they have also their problem. But of course, they maintain this relationship between uh, um, diversity of life. This mean, it's not the preservation of nature, as we know, and I think so. Well, social science school, I don't need to say about their cosmology, but it's pretty entangled in a web of life, let's put it that way, which is quite different than the one at least myself personally live. This mean, the world now, what, what, what I've been moving a lot is about how I can entangle myself with, with this practice. In this case, is Pierre Bolo, who have a set of cards uh, which are these very beautiful leaves, which each of them have an incision. And the, the village of Somier, a couple of thousand people, every time that they have a very a important question and not so, so, not so important, the spiders consult. Does it mean if in, in general terms here we still suffer from a lot of phobias, something which is called arachnophobia, there are many philias, there are many cultures still alive who love spiders and to maintain it's like a cows in India, right? That's holies, and they, they can work a lot. And this means we have been working now together with them and trying to see how um, could coexist uh, these different uh, forms of belief and how also they could reappropriate also uh, this uh, form of divination. Of course, I work with David Seitlin, a, a person from the Oxford University who have visited the village for over uh, 30 years, and, and of course also Cameroon is the country in the world with more alive languages, more than 400 are still spoken. Now, it's not by, by maybe a um, um, casualty or by, by mistake that they also may, might be talking by their language. This means when Frederick said, oh, I don't speak English, I said, don't worry, I don't speak by their language. Still. <laughs> but some people, yes, speak uh, or are able to communicate. Uh, have, you an, have you an excerpt of the film? Um, because the film, the, the, the film is fantastic. Yeah. I, I, I just describe it one moment. Huh? Yeah. And uh, donc ce, 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 devin, uh, ce devin Camerounais, uh, il y a cette, uh, donc à ce petit territoire avec la... la, la l'araignée qui est au fond d'un trou et euh, il pose une question et la question c'est euh, par exemple euh, est-ce que vous araignée vous aimez les humains et, euh, et l'araignée au bout d'un jour, deux jours, trois jours parfois elle prend son temps pour répondre euh, répond en faisant bouger une des feuilles euh, qui, est, euh, qui a été posée préalablement par le devin et donc on a la réponse What's the question uh, do you, What do you think of humans or do you like humans <laughs> What was the question Something like that we like human, but not everyone. <laughs> that was the answer of the spider. Um, <laughs> for example, this is a question of a, a dean of the engineering and environmental sustainability uh, um, at MIT, a, a very high professor, over 200 people in charge. And he asked the spider, can the spider affirm the universe? Universal diversity principle. This means the question that I posed to the spider, I also thought that he could help science. You know, in for one moment, kind of, I, I separate. And then I said, but why not to invite them also? And then maybe together we could kind of um, entangle ourselves. This means um, now, in, in what was very important also for me, because when I arrived there to the village, I say, oh, what I do, you know what I mean? It was still. I feel very uncomfortable. You have to think, I, I, I come from Argentina, and many times, um, if you have been in many other places, when you meet somebody in the street and you want to take a picture, they ask you for money, rightly, no? Say, like, hey, you sell the picture, give me money. And many times I confront myself how to expose and how we kind of establish that relationship. And it's mean, I didn't want to film Bolo. I felt like, again, I will be a show at the Serpentine, I cash the fee. What is the benefit of Bolo? What is we keep doing? The National Geographic documentation about somebody living and well, I right. And I mean, what we did, and I think so. That's important. And we talk a little bit with Jean. It's like a stay there a couple of weeks. It was two, three weeks, and then I want to come back to Frederic about slow and take your time. 
and take your time. And then you hang out and you have a beer. And the next day you have a beer again. And next day, until you start to feel, coming also with David, which had been there in the village for 30 years, almost every year. This mean, but you hang out. After, there was one day that Bolo said, Thomas, I, and we didn't take picture, we didn't film, we just want to hang out with him. After a while, he looked at me and said, Thomas, I know what I want. Can you make a web page for me? Because I want to sell my divination to the rest of the world. And that was beautiful, because then for me was, was set the terms and conditions that how I could maybe access his knowledge, because it was a business for him also, in very clear terms. This means every time we show this piece, you see that below is uh, uh, ask the spider, click here to request a consultation. This means in the museums very clearly, we do, he's kind of super proud because we, I, I turn in kind of an advertising agent, a curator, and I'm selling spider divination to him with a, with, <laughs> some are quite expensive, now they decided to lower the price and they, they have a whole protocol of how this will be decided, but at least, mm, and, and, help me if there might be an, a better one. But it was very clear for me the exchange and relationship between how to expose his knowledge and what is the benefit that it provided. The, I think it's over 25,000 euro we managed through the web page, uh, to his web page. The IP is him, the, don the domain is him, and we don't take like Google or Apple 30%. Of that is me. Is, is the full revenue? You, you, it give goes me, to them. you give me an example of a, of a kind of competition for scientific uh, that was in which uh, mm. some scientific were looking for birds mm. teaching uh, mm. some population mm. how to mm. find honey. Can you tell this story? It's yeah. very interesting because yeah. ça c'est une histoire qui nous explique comment il y a un, euh, un déséquilibre euh, ou une, une incompréhension euh, dans euh, la façon dont on peut échanger avec des personnes dont on acquiert le savoir. Tu peux yeah. raconter ça. OK. You know, I, I've been doing this for quite a bit, you know. Uh, we, uh, the, the, the hardcore... Science is there, right? We have all these archive. These are very sophisticated microphones who pick up vibration. This was, I mean, we developed for, for quite a bit. We have the, 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 um, a unique um, uh, collection of uh, spider vibration, right? Um, for that extent, you know, it's, it, together with MIT, with the Max Planck Institute group uh, of animal behavior, we have this community called arachnophilia, which. Um, Somehow we're trying to really engage in, into a dialogue with uh, webs and, and spiders, thinking that the web is always, you know, you're a, a pretty much accustomed now to think about the octopus and that the brain is not anymore localized in, or the mind and the brain, but it's kind of distributed. The web also has been there is a kind of intelligence in relationship to these uh, webs of life, just to give you a little bit of context. And, and, and then that you can see in this web page many type of um, vibration that it signif or we are trying to understand certain type of, 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 of communication. This means they invite us uh, because um, a very um, a person uh, uh, will give a uh, one million dollars to the first team who is able to invent a Google translator for animals, right? <laughs> Let's put it that way. And then since we are very good in spiders, say okay Maybe you can uh, compete with uh, within the competition. Does it mean that, that you will be able to understand what the dog is telling you, what the cat is doing, right? Um, now, I will not talk about my case. Well, what I, I said to MIT and, and Max Planck, I said, let's talk about the spider diviner in Cameroon. But I tell you something which happened in the chat. I mean, it was a very tiny community, but quite, it was a three days workshop, and many teams have been there present. Very advanced, right, from in science, no, from dolphin specialists, Peter Gabriel, and, and many others were there also in the jury. Now, they present a case, which I think so was very, very important, um, was a case of um, a community in Africa, this was in, um, in Ethiopia, which are able to um, talk with the birds. What they do is um, it, they, they produce certain sound, look, 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 look and the birds respond. Now, the birds, what it, it tells is where a, a wild honeybee might be in the middle of the forest. 
Hence, I mean, they, they exchange with a bird, glue, 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 and then glue, 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 and then the tribe is guided over sometimes hours and hours where a honeybee is located. And then uh, the tribe cut the tree, fall down, they pick up the honey, and the birds eat the wax and all the rest. This, mean, this has been going on for thousands of years that they, this, this community is able really to talk with the birds. And the birds, in a fair exchange, they guide the humans where the honeybees are there. This, I mean, this happened in the conversation. For me, it was almost like the diviners speaking with the spiders, right? They had been talking. And even all the village used the spider web intelligence, not only artificial intelligence, right? It's a beautiful they, text. They did of, that since uh, hundred years. The, the thousands thousand of years. years. Yeah. I mean, now when this happened in the chat, I say, "What wow, amazing!" Then we know exactly who is winning the million dollars, right? And I put, I posted in the chat, and then there was a silence. Say, "Ah, yes, this scientific community who is presenting the case should win a million dollars." And I said, "No, my friends, it's the community who should get the million dollars." And everybody was puzzled because they were not used, because science keep appropriating knowledge from the other one, and this they will get the million, and maybe they give some part to the other one. And this means, why not to give the million dollars to the community who have been talking in every language already with the birds for thousands of years? And that was a kind of a crisis in the whole community because they kind of changed the rules of the game because they say, well, then to this price can apply only also indigenous knowledge and other communities around the world which are not scientific communities only. Has been, and how we can keep appropriating certain things in a way that still is pretty uh, violent. So, je vais, I'm going to ask uh, Frédéric a question because you have to rest a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> and I am extremely interested by this story because it shows how the artist is uh, dealing with things that are not only shapes, but maybe state of mind in a way. Et je voulais te demander, cher Frédéric, euh, quel est le rôle d'un artiste dans un, dans un temps de crise ou quel est le rôle d'un artiste quand tu entends euh, Thomas, par exemple Quel est, quel est euh, au fond, euh, le rôle d'un artiste qui ne se contente pas d'inventer de, des formes Attends, je vais te passer un micro formidable. Regarde. Merci. Alors, je, je voulais un petit peu orienter... Euh, ta question, parce que je l'avais promis aussi au, à mes étudiants, oui, qui étaient venus m'entendre aussi parler de, de ça. Je, je, vais, je vais réorienter autour du, du problème de la responsabilité, la responsabilité de l'artiste. Voilà. Euh, responsabilité de l'artiste, et c'est vrai qu'on a une tradition en France, euh, parce qu'on promeut la figure de l'intellectuel, qui consiste à dire que l'intellectuel, l'artiste... Euh, L'écrivain a une responsabilité qui consiste à s'engager, proposer quand même un certain nombre d'énoncés qui seraient des énoncés forts pour construire le, le futur. Et je trouve que ce que propose Thomas ici et dans ses, dans ses expositions, c'est quelque chose qui nous ramène à ce sens de la responsabilité qui, là encore, est, est tout premier et un, un autre trésor perdu aussi et qui est de rester attentif à, au, au respondéré de la responsabilité. C'est-à-dire le responsable, c'est celui qui répond. Et le, le pas en avant que fait Thomas, je trouve, dans ses, dans ses installations, c'est de dire, mais, mais pour pouvoir répondre, il faut d'abord savoir écouter. C'est-à-dire écouter, se mettre en demeure d'écouter, et ce qui est proposé dans, ces, dans ce qu'il nous a dit, dans ses expériences, dans ses installations, c'est cette capacité à, à écouter des, la, la, la présence élémentaire des choses. La présence élémentaire des choses. Quand je dis la présence élémentaire des choses, je veux dire avant même que l'intelligence toujours un peu arrogante qui fonctionne par euh, binarité, l'homme, la nature, euh, soit les autres, euh, euh, l'âme, le corps, etc. L'expérience le, le, au, au cœur des installations de, de, de Thomas Saraceno nous met en demeure 
d'écouter, d'écouter ces vibrations qui sont, qui sont la présence élémentaire des choses et d'y, euh, et d'y répondre. C'est-à-dire que on, on devient, et, et je trouve que c'est, c'est une expérience assez, assez unique, assez folle, une, une chambre d'écho, redevenir une chambre d'écho des vibrations du monde. Et ça, si vous voulez, c'est vrai que... Alors, on a eu des, des discussions tout à l'heure avec Thomas. C'est vrai qu'on on aime marcher tous les deux, <rire> caminar, etc. Et c'est vrai que dans la, dans la marche, il y a cette dimension, évidemment, d'une, d'une appropriation du paysage, mais qui est une appropriation écologique. Écologique au sens où, précisément, il s'agit par l'art de redécouvrir ce trésor perdu où... On s'approprie les choses, pas pour en faire de la propriété, mais pour en faire du propre, du, 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 du proprium. Et on ne sait plus s'approprier les choses que pour en faire des propriétés, c'est-à-dire pour les soumettre finalement à une, à une jouissance prédatrice, c'est-à-dire euh, je prends, c'est à moi, c'est bien à moi, euh, regarde comme c'est à moi, hein, regarde comme c'est bien à moi, et la preuve c'est que je peux le détruire. C'est-à-dire, dans, dans la propriété, il y a évidemment l'idée... La définition de la propriété, c'est l'abus. Hein. Ce que j'ai, c'est ce dont je peux abuser. Ce, ce à quoi nous, nous réveille l'art de Thomas Saraceno, c'est à cette é- appropriation écologique des choses, mais écologique, encore une fois, aussi en grec, c'est oikos, c'est, les, c'est, c'est l'oikos qui donne écologie, qui donne appropriation, c'est-à-dire ce par quoi quelque chose comme un monde propre à nous, mais c'est de la coappropriation à chaque fois, c'est de la responsabilité au sens... Euh, voilà, c'est, c'est, moi, c'est, 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 c'est ça que j'ai compris comme, comme responsabilité nouvelle de l'artiste qui serait de, de, de pouvoir, parce qu'on les écoute, parce qu'on les entend, euh, et ben retrouver ces, ces voix qui sont les voix du vivant, les voix de la, les voix de la matière, les voix de la... la et voix de la présence. Et ça, je, je, je trouve que c'est très... Euh, voilà, c'est, c'est, c'est capital aujourd'hui parce que cette, euh, cette appropriation prédatrice, on est en train d'en, d'en crever, d'en, d'en mourir, parce que, parce que voilà, il s'agit, il s'agit de, retrouver ce, de retrouver ce mode-là. Je trouve que c'est ça la responsabilité. Oui. Alors, tu sais que je suis propriétaire de ce catalogue euh, <rire> qui euh, s'appelle Thomas Saraceno in Collaboration. Si je vous le montre, ce n'est pas juste parce que, euh, en étant propriétaire, j'ai le droit de le détruire, puisque je peux détruire ce qui m'appartient, n'est-ce pas, je peux en abuser, mais parce que Thomas a eu l'intelligence de mettre dans la couverture des graines, et c'est-à-dire que si vous ne voulez pas le lire, vous le mettez sous la terre et ça devient un jardin. Et ça, c'est pas mal quand même. Hein. Donc, euh, bravo, Thomas. Je trouve que c'est une idée magnifique. Merci. Alors, I know that Thomas doesn't agree at all with uh, what uh, Frédéric said, because uh, Frédéric said, you have to listen to, uh, etc. And uh, Thomas always say, I don't have to listen to, I have to dialogue. <laughs> Something like that, no? Yeah. No, one thing before I forgot, um, with Frédéric also, that I thought, when, when we then start to do the webpage, this is uh, the webpage, please go visit from Pierre Bolo and the community of diviners. Uh, this is the domain and quite complicated. I mean, I, I don't get you crazy now in the details, but when you, but, but it's a lot of work. As, and, and I like this idea of slowness again, no? When we have to travel back to Berlin, we might need to wait five days because the wind current will take us directly there, but in five days. I mean, the speed of today seems something which I kind of appreciate when I look at your book and your work. Now, also the speed of the internet, which was quite something of a important, because the first version was quite uh, energy demanding. The picture was such a high resolution that many colleagues in, in places with low speed internet could not have access. I mean, now we redesign it all again with a, possibility of having much more um, um, resolution that is more in tune with also with the community that from the global south who might be able to have, to have access also to this information. That, you know, it's like 
how we manage the payment, the bank account. I mean, is, is uh, the maintenance, what happened from here to in 50, 100 years, uh, how in the village we will we'll become accounting. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a quite of a long uh, process that, that we are in. It's five, six years already into the making, and, it, and it's still uh, um, beautiful. Um, Dear Thomas, you, are very, you have been influenced by a, a book of Guattari in which he speaks of the mental, social, and environment, uh, environmental economy and, uh, and ecology. And I think that it is those three terms, huh? mm. mental, mental, social, and environ environmental, that are mm. important for you. Mm. Uh, does the work that you do about lithium uh, and Pachamama is mm. linked to this? Can mm. you explain something about mm. that? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, the, 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 the more the social and environmental was present, so far the mental was uh, maybe less present, and, um, but I'm trying to get more and more. What could I say? Uh, something very helpful was uh, when I did the Vipassana. I don't know if some of you have practiced, but it's 10 days in completely silence without uh, being able to speak with other people and you don't have access to Internet is kind of a meditative practice. I did it for many years, um, a transcendental meditation. Now I'm in Vipassana and I'm trying to experience different modes to to be, which might be the, the, the completion of this, um, um, yeah, three ecologies from Guattari, you know, the social ecology, and environmental ecology, and mental ecology, uh, to reframe a little bit um, the ecology of practice, maybe of. Elizabeth Stengers and the responsibility, you know, the ability or respond to something I like how also the, the word can be the couple. Um, now, the, the other community, I'm, I'm, I'm happy here that uh, Eric uh, Fremont is here, very crucial also into the making of this project, but, but this project also started a little bit completely unex unexpected, uh, commissioned by a, a BTS band, a Korean pop, which I didn't know nothing about it, but it seems it's quite huge. I don't know how many of you know, it's kind of a huge popular band in South Korea, and they ask us to do a project, whatever we would like to do. This means, to cut it short, um, um, we end up in, um, in, the, in Jujuy, Argentina, in a place that I didn't know, um, where um, certain communities living there had uh, to try to fly these uh, huge, um, I don't know if I see, I try to make it a little bit bigger. Um, this sculpture, um, uh, oh yeah, there we are. Um, um, now, um, Veronica Chavez uh, is, a good, is a very good friend. Uh, these are all the community who live at the edge of the Salt Lake. And, uh, and here's a little bit of the struggle that they are having. Um, one ton of lithium uh, require two million liters of water. These are places which are quite dry already. These are the pools of evaporation for the brine then to get uh, more uh, pure and then being able to evaporate through this process of evaporation the, the, the mineral or the lithium. Has it mean, uh, well, this is a little bit uh, the consumption of how much uh, lithium is required for a laptop, for a car, and for a computer. And these are a couple of companies which are involved. Has it mean, what, what we um, end up doing there, at the beginning we, 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 we went there because it's uh, white, the surface, the albedo reflection of the surface, it helps a lot to this culture to gain buoyancy. This means you, you will be able to fly 30% more just only because of the surface of the ground. There are no trees and it's quite beautiful. Now when we went there, we, we, we confront with the communities and there it kind of started the relationship uh, was um, like maybe eight years ago. And then every two years we start to, to visit them. Um, now, what was quite, quite beautiful in, in the movie that now we show at a serpent and it's kind of an ongoing movie, and the community decided to write this beautiful message, uh, the water and life is much worse than lithium. And um, 
And at the same time, this flight marked uh, 32 world record of the most sustainable flight in human history. Um, but the pilot was Leticia Noin Marquez. This mean, and, and then it came all the, this were the moment we decided to write the message and, and so forth. Uh, now I like the project because it kind of, he started from, from a Korean pop band that I didn't know, uh, then we joined together with a community and then kind of we, we end up in a very beautiful, um, I think so, union that uh, still up today we are, uh, um, keep uh, voicing in about, um, yeah, this um, complete injustice, no, of the green energy transition from the global north and how much still is so colonial. And, and Europe now have signed a kind of merciless program on, the, um, it's called, um, because some part of the community is a huge group called Erosin also, and we work with lawyers, part of the community also, well, last time we went there, uh, they decided to declare the territory under subjects of nature, the rights of nature, you might know, and this means they also have, we facilitate that with a group of lawyers. Uh, now, um, it's called strategic resources. If you read the whole um, uh, paper of the European Union, um, it doesn't say nothing about the acknowledging of the people living there. This means um, it, it's, it, nothing has changed so much so far, at least with, uh, with this case. It's been in, um, in Argentina now, election is uh, next Sunday. Very sadly, it's not looking so good. Uh, politics looks very grim, and there's a candidate from extreme right, which is a mix between Trump and Bolsonaro, which is completely dangerous. And, uh, and the second candidate, Massa, have elected as a vice president, also Gerardo Morales, which is the governors of this area. Um, it's completely corrupted at the same time, but what is more corrupted, I think so, is the not acknowledging also from, from, um, from let's say the global north, if you want to put it under this, this framework. Um, yeah, the rights of the people who live there. Cher Thomas, chers amis, on a entendu une attitude d'artiste qui est extrêmement différente de ce dont on a l'habitude, c'est-à-dire une, une œuvre qui, qui se construit d'une attention d'une autre nature au monde que, euh, effectivement, comme on le disait tout à l'heure, le monde des formes et le monde du, 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 du premier sens des formes. Alors, euh, je pense que c'est assez passionnant. Beaucoup d'entre vous qui, connaissaient, qui connaissiez peut-être certaines sculptures en, en, en euh, toile d'araignée, peut-être ne devinaient pas que ça devenait un, un modèle de compréhension du monde beaucoup plus large. Et je pense que c'est ça qui est fascinant dans le travail de Thomas, que je remercie vraiment vivement. Je voudrais, je sais qu'il y a beaucoup de questions qui, qui vont être posées, qui sont préparées pour quelques-unes et d'autres spontanées. Et donc, euh, présentez-vous et Thomas vous écoute. Good afternoon, buenas tardes. Muchas gracias por su presencia. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Maria, and uh, well, as part of uh, a subject related to the Maison des Arts, uh, we wanted to ask you a question related to your work. So your work has been focused since the beginning on the fragility of our planet, the atmosphere, and all the species that live under it. You have given a voice to dust, to spiders, and created museums that move with the wind. So all of these intervention, interventions have been Earth-located and Earth-focused. Uh, however, I personally wanted to ask about a sentence that can be found in your biography for at least the last 10 years which is Saraceno lives and works in and beyond the planet Earth. Mm. Would you agree with this definition? And what is this beyond? What is the term of beyond? Thank you. Um, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, another good friend that also passed away was Stavros Katsanevas, that uh, we we work, uh, he was a de 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 director of the um, 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 gravitational wave detector uh, in Pisa. And when we opened the Palais de Tokyo, the first piece was, uh, he was uh, streaming, uh, you know, gravitational wave detectors are, uh, when two black holes collide, uh, um, it, it send ripples. Ça s'appelle la coalescence des trous noirs. That, that space and time, um, 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 
deform everything on the way. Because when we became a billion of a billion of a particle, a bit small and a bit large. And this, I mean, it's really kind of space and time is, uh, is something that um, is not a constant, right? As Einstein always was said in the theory of relativity. Now, we, we, we were always trying to think about uh, if this, the spider will be able to detect this gravitational waves with this web and if there will be some correlation between that. Um, now, the, the, with the movie and the community in the north of Argentina also, Pachamama is Mother Earth, but Pacha also is um, the continuum of space-time. Um, um, it, 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 it seems it, it, there is a certain way of entanglement of the way of, of what Pacha means, which is pretty uh, related with the quantum definition uh, of what scientists today is, are, are trying to, to understand this entanglement. This mean, um, I, 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 I don't know. I'm only trying to think sometimes about these different cosmologies and how different cultures have uh, weaved that. Today we're talking with Jean Dulazi also, the Xelnam. Now I remember these, these communities of, of, of communities in south of Chile and also in Argentina, um, 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 pre Inca civilization. They also, they believe to live in space and they would be able to look one to each other through the holes of the planet. This means inverse the relationship of what is habitable or not uh, for the, well, well, you know, I'm fascinated by astrobiology and exoplanets and all of that. You know, I get all the time an alarm on my phone every time that uh, a new exoplanet is discovered. You know, I'm a little bit also into that. And, and think also that, you know, and argue also a little bit, I, I will say sometime with Bruno, which, um, <laughs> And with Bronislav Sesinski, a friend, and, and so forth. Um, sometimes, you know, the way of thinking is, oh, the one who think about space and the terrestrial, right? And there is, seems a huge sublunar, lunar division about the capacity of weaving both worlds, right? And, and, and I'm, I think so this thermodynamic equilibrium is something which I pretty much like it. You know, if I will be obsessed only to think about the planetary um, um, uh, realms, we will never be able to find this neutral point of flotation, right? Um, we, um, you have to think that, um, um, you know, this Irosin, this principle I have not invented. You were an Iranian guy in the 70s, then Dominique Michaelis, another person, and I just continue. But we have been very few, no, who tried to float in the atmosphere in that way. Now, the way of thinking, I think, so you still have this dependency with the sun. Otherwise, you will not be able. And Knes did three times around the world, I mean, in that extent, with a Mir uh, infrared balloon which is the one who really is able to, during the days, go 42 kilometers, then it drops down 20, and it goes up. And this, I mean, it finds really this, this, uh, this ocean of air so without burning fossil fuel. But yeah, I, I don't know if it answered that, but... Um, On dirait qu'on est vraiment beyond, hein, non? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. The beyond is within, you know, because space is always inner space, outer space, and I think so what it does, I don't see it, it, it brings space also within yourself, no? It's, it's, it doesn't alienate it as something which is out your own possibility. Because, however, where does space start? Is the Karadam line, right? It's 100 kilometers above the Earth is where objects stop falling, right? That's more or less in physics. It's always a construction of, of geopolitics because sometimes it was 300. The ISS, International Space Station, is 400 because still there is some, after a while the object would fall. Now, you have to think that what with aerosene in the community, you don't need to go 100 kilometers to float. You can float here mm -hmm. at 10 meters above the ground. This means space is not something which is, this, you know, bring it back. Belle question, so. où commence l'espace? Alors, il y a deux, c'est peut-être très près de nous et peut-être en nous. Madame, une autre question, présentez-vous. Uh, thank you very much for being here. I'm uh, Chiara. Uh, I'm also an ambassador for the Maison des Arts et de la Création. So I really wanted to thank you for being here. Uh, my question is rather down to earth. Um, so both, both. Earth is part yeah, of, a, of a larger ecosystem <laughs> that we need to. 
so to what extent do you think your works allow the audience to think and rethink the relationships between human beings and animals? And why is this questioning crucial at the time of the Anthropocene era? And another question, uh, do you think that this transformation can happen with only ascribing your works in is within institutional spaces? Um, I don't uh -huh. know if I can answer all the questions, <laughs> but, but I only can say, look, uh, institutional question. You know, sometimes I go to, uh, and this is what we did at the Palais de Tokyo. We arrive there and say, who is here, right? Um, um, and we find out that there are, <laughs> it's one of the few museum in the world that have, I think, some more spiders than anybody else. <laughs> you go to the basement, it is full of spiders and spider webs. Don't, don't, right? don't repeat. Don't repeat. <laughs> <laughs> now with the bad bugs here, that the, ph the phobia. Look at this. What happened? You know what I mean. It, and and what, what what also the cause of the um, COVID nineteen also no? the displacement of certain um, habitats at the at the mercy of our others, right? Because. You know, the deforestation and the cutting in advance of a certain um, way of living, it kind of really displaced. And then um, certain animals jump into a space of others, and this is what it happened. But I think so, this, um, this possibility of um, 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 how it's called, um, I forgot. Um, but nevertheless, spiders are on the planet Earth since 400 million years, humans. Sapiens, the last kind is only 210,000 years. Sometimes in biology, you could say you will be able to survive in a place when at least you have lived five million years. This means spiders are things are quite good. 400 millions. Humans? Humans? And now, which humans? Because otherwise, again, we fall in the trap of the Anthropocene, right? Uh, that we are all better off. I think so, the spider diviners, they will be able, because they are so entangled with the web of life, to be able to survive for quite a bit. I think so, the, the one who has so many phobias and, and clean the sterilization of the world as, as, as many museums <laughs> are uh, um, white cubes, uh, sometimes is getting more difficult. This means sometimes is what many times is uh, invert the rights for invertebrate rights. You know, which represent 80% of all the animals of the planet Earth. There are not insects, there are arachnids. Now, how much we can deal with that uh, relation? And I don't know if this answers the question, yes, yes. more or less. More or less. Mm. <laughs> mm. More it's or tamal, less. Tamal, tamal. <laughs> uh, no, but otherwise, tell me again. I don't want to, yeah. Um, just a question, because you bear a very strong message of expanding the limits of art as well. With Expanding the limit of art. Art, I yes. see. And uh, you talked about the, your exhibition at the Palais de Tokyo, and I was wondering how do you see the limits between museums and institutionalized spaces and the rest of the world? The museum and institution, yes. No, what, what, what I could say honestly, you know, when. I know Hans Ulrich since 20 years. And when he invited me to the serpent, I say, well, Hans, I'm not interested anymore to do a show at the serpent. You came too late. And I was very honest to him. Now, I did it anyway. But the moment that I said I did it, because I said, well, maybe I can continue to do what I want and then still use this exhibition, this museum, to do something which I'm interested. This means keep continuing with the spider diviners and with the communities in Salinas Grandes and, and, and stream that video. This means sometimes in my mind it's like, you know, okay, <laughs> keep doing shows in museum is, you know what I mean? But I think so it's the same click what I did sometime with MIT. Why we don't ask science also which question can do to the spider diviners? And both can maybe contribute and collaborate. This mean, I'm, I'm hopeful in, in that sense. But sometimes, yes, I drop down and say, oh, you know what I mean? It's, uh, but, but I think so, yes. I don't know if this oh, C'est une très bonne question. C'est une réponse intéressante. Il y a un moment où l'artiste considère, cet artiste considère que l'espace du musée n'est pas suffisamment euh, euh, disponible, ouvert, euh, euh, collectif au sens global pour pouvoir... Euh, recevoir l'état de sa pensée. Ça, je pense que c'est extrêmement intéressant. Euh, le musée n'est pas le seul destin des artistes. 
peut-être. Attends, 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 il y a une autre question. Attends, 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 attends. Honnêtement, then when I go because I said okay, but listen, if at the end and I went to Cameroon and I say, Bolo, are you interested to show in London? And Bolo say, of course. He say yes. I'm gonna sell a lot of divination. Stop with your stupid Western problem of critique. I'm very interesting. And then we gave the first room. When I went to the community in Salinas Grandes, they said, of course, Thomas, voice our problems as much as you can. And this means, you know, it turned less of my problem, but I kind of, working with others also, you know, I, I kind of share the responsibility, maybe, of being with, uh, you know, in, in a kind of wider discourse that I feel more comfortable. Bon, les, beaucoup de gens de musée viennent d'être assurés. Je voyais Marguerite, c'était le cas. Euh, il y a une autre question, je crois, qui est prête quelque part. Non Je l'ai imaginé. Est-ce que quelqu'un veut poser une question Et puis nous allons conclure ensuite. Oui. Je vois une question là-bas, à Babor, pour moi. Hello, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm Julie, I'm a, a first uh, year student in uh, Master uh, uh, Creative Industries and Communication. Um, so you talked about moving and how spiders and webs can help us understand how they, uh, how we live. And I was wondering if you had ever thought uh, of working on the web but at, as a network like uh, internet, you know, um, on which we also wander and make relation, but also uh, in which we, fin, which is uh, also col a collaborative tool and which is also uh, rhizomatic, uh, as uh, you, s you talked about, uh, Guattari. Uh, I don't know if I'm being clear. Yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah I, I like this idea that we talk about something without knowing, really, if we understand it. It's almost talking with a spider, you know what I mean? Or with a web. Uh, I hope so, I vibrate. Oh, I understand part of the vibration. Now, there is a case in, uh, there is a zombie spider, which is quite of an interesting case. He's a wasp who hijacked the brain. I mean, everybody knows that in the 70s we are done these very cruel experiments of spiders under drug. And this means that there will be a kind of a orb web, and then to different spiders will be given different drugs, and then see which drug will perturbate more how the web is weave, right? Caffeine, LSD, uh, amphetamine, you know, and so forth. Now, the one who is less uh, recognizable, um, the, the, the web was caffeine. This means it's the one who hijacked more the brain of the spider. Now, there, was a, there is a wasp who hijacked the brain of the spider to, and, and, it, and the spider then weave a web to the benefit of the babies which are, um, put in the back of the spiders. This means it, it kind of make an open air brain operation. He tell the spider, he's almost like for me the internet today, right? <laughs> Just to, to, to think because the title of the work I refer to that. And, and then the web that it weave is on the solely benefit of the time that the wasp, now sometimes is able to reverse and the spider is alive. This means not always it, the, the spider after that being hijacked the brain, and the web had been weaved for the benefit of the wasp. Many times the spider is able to recover and, 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 the, and, the, and the babies of the wasp do not eat the, the spider. I mean, in, in that extent, um, is internet dead or not, right? Or, or internet web point three and, and all this kind of new technology might be able to bring um, there is a beautiful sentence from, uh, or a quote by King S. Robinson, which it says, uh, uh, justice is the best technology, right? Which is beautiful. It's been, why we don't think about that, you know, on, on technology recoupled again with, with justice. And then I don't know if the web of today is really bringing more justice or not. I'm rather skeptical, but, but but also is is pretty much sometimes you know they then the the app how much they get no is one th I mean Uber doesn't pay tax ah, he's crazy right and he's uh, he needs to find other system to really 
But you are looking for finding other systems anyway, all the time. Mm. Thomas, c'est le moment de, de te remercier. Merci, you, tu élargis, uh, you enlarge a lot de, mm. de, 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 le territoire de notre pensée, les possibilités, les attentions, les alertes, les inquiétudes, les, les réponses aussi, et tu le fais avec une poésie et un engagement magnifique. Donc, uh, Frédéric et moi, te remercions. Notre prochain rendez-vous est le 13 novembre avec Kapwani Kiwanga. Merci. Pardon Le 13 novembre avec Kapwani Kiwanga. Bon après-midi, bonne soirée. Salut